Republican presidential candidates are returning to the debate stage for a third time this week. The candidates will try to show the American people how they differ from their colleagues, except the debate format doesn't really give them an opportunity to do that. That's because the real debates don't happen until after the conventions when we're down to one candidate per party. Frankly, primary debates aren't debates at all. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary lays it out like this. Debates are a discussion between people in which they express different opinions about something. So by definition alone, the primary debates are hardly debates because the candidates on stage all have pretty similar views on the issues. There may be nuances to their positions and subtle differences in policy, but by and large, every Republican candidate is going to be in favor of things like lower taxes, increased military spending, and smaller government, and every Democrat is going to be against them. The second thing that makes primary debates not debates is the questions. Moderators tailor them to each candidate, which helps the candidates cover a lot of topics in a short period of time. But it doesn't allow for the point-counterpoint element that makes a debate a debate. In this regard, we could take a page from our neighbor to the north. Canada structures its debates on a small number of issues, and the candidates typically go back and forth on each of them several times. So there's a more substantive back and forth and fewer one-liners. Finally, this election cycle, the debates are just too big. Five candidates on stage was bad enough on the Democratic side, but double-digit Republican candidates is immensely worse. With those kinds of numbers, it's nearly impossible to give every candidate time to talk about the issues, and even less time for other candidates to respond to criticism afterwards. So if the primary debates aren't debates, what are they? They're media hype events for candidates to bring their campaign to a national audience. The lights, camera, graphics, and especially this massive plane are just smoke and mirrors, meant to distract us from the fact that the candidates often aren't actually laying out their policies. Instead, they're parroting the same lines they've used in the campaign trail and trying to play to the live audience with rehearsed lines written by their campaigns designed to get a reaction. The problem is, we eat all of this up like we're in the crowd for Springer, but we should demand better. It's not often that the candidates are all in the same room, so we should use that time wisely by letting every candidate answer the same questions, even if they only get through three or four topics. At least we'll know the differences between the candidates. It may not be the most exciting television, but at least it wouldn't be the overhyped media spectacle that it is now.